Hey everyone, we're at Computex 2018 at the CryoRig booth now. They have a couple of updates for this year. The main one I think that you all will be interested in is the R5 cooler. So the R5 was shown probably about a year ago, never really came out. It's finally coming out and they have a reason for it. It's a new mounting system. So we'll be talking about that for the show. And then also they have a new fan design that we'll be talking about and the Frostbit M.2 SSD cooler that I mentioned in a news video recently. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermaltake's View 37 case. The View 37 focuses on highlighting custom PC builds with its full panoramic window and tinted front acrylic. In our thermal testing, the View 37 performed reasonably well when considering its looks-focused build, which is partly thanks to the airflow design and the removal of a bottom power supply shroud. For a balance of looks and performance, check the link in the description below for the View 37. So for the R5 cooler, uh, this basically, it's the same thing you saw previously, except they've changed the mounting system. So now it sockets into a motherboard. Just you, here's how it goes. You install a mounting plate with four screws in it, no cooler, and then the click mount system with a Q uh, sockets in sort of at an angle and then it just clicks. And then you go in through the top of the screwdriver, tighten down the single screw. So technically it's about the same amount of screws, maybe one more, but because you attach the mounting plate before getting the cooler on top of it, it's a bit more convenient because you're not going to have to like try and get your fingers under the side of a sharp heat sink and cut your hands up. So that's the idea. So yes, more screws, but way easier to install and remove is the, the approach for this one. So that's the R5. It's supposed to be about $70, quarter three-ish for the launch on that one probably. And otherwise, uh, two fans on it. And I think the big thing here is the click mount mounting system. We'll show you footage of it. It'll make complete sense when you see it. Other than that, they're supposed to be moving that mounting system to most of the products going forward, especially the tower coolers. In Speaking of tower coolers, the H7, very popular cooler from CryoRig, has now been upgraded. So it has one more heat pipe. It's got four now instead of three, and they're calling it the H7 Ultra. Don't really know the price impact yet. Shouldn't be more than 5 $6 probably to get that extra heat pipe. And obviously, we haven't thermally tested anything here at the show, but uh, it would do a little bit, just not sure how much. Other product updates really quickly. They've got a fan here, 1600 RPM fan. It's an RGB fan. The only thing that's really noteworthy with this is that they've replaced the entire chassis. So the fan shell, the square normally is gone. And instead they've gone with sort of a perforated panel similar to the uh, N7 motherboard that's on the wall right here. So it's a perforated panel and all it does is just bring out the RGB circle on top of it a bit more. That's really the kind of the start and the end of the fan. Nothing too special with it just killing the chassis for RGB purposes. Finally, the Frostbit cooler. We talked about this previously. So it's got a uh, pivotable, basically, heat sink on top to get out of the way of GPUs, and you sit it on top of an M.2 device. It's got a one millimeter thick thermal pad in there, uh, heat sink, and sinks the SSDs. Now, a couple of things here. We've talked about it before. SSDs don't generally need to be heat synced. You probably won't need that extra performance thermally it'll be fine. In some cases, yes, you might be thermal throttling with an M.2 SSD, primarily with RAID, but pretty rare. And uh, also, in terms of these products, you actually don't want to cool the flash, you want to cool the controller, but they're not going to go below ambient anyway, so it's really kind of hard to say how much of an issue that actually is in reality. Uh, in theory, your endurance is improved for an operating piece of flash as the temperature is higher uh, and also reduced or increased temperature if it's inoperative. So kind of inverse there, where the controller needs to be cold, flash doesn't, but because they're not going below ambient, probably not a huge deal. And if you do have an issue with your controller overheating, then I guess you could look into an M.2 cooler. Ultimately, if I give you my opinion on these types of products, I think it's more of an accessory thing. It's kind of a higher margin type of thing. This is what I'm interested in. So that's the R5 cooler. It's got the click mount system. From what I'm told, it should have about the same mounting pressure as going with the traditional four screws, because what happens is as you screw down into that black plate at the bottom, which has a screw in it, it will pull the plate up. So it's just pressure pulling it up from getting tightened. That'll apply all the down pressure on the IHS for the CPU in the socket. So that's CryoRig's booth. Thanks for watching. As always, subscribe for more CompuTax coverage. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Top us out directly and store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of our mod mats or one of the award crystals that we'll be giving out here at the show. Hopefully the vendors don't buy them if they don't win it instead. I'll see you all next time.